Okay, I'm going to do a very brief demonstration because it's a very simple idea of making these uh, works out of push pins. I'm going to use the, the one of the two uh, pictures I sent you. You can use whatever, you don't have to use one of those two, but I'm using the, the easiest one of the two. Why are we doing this with push pins instead of paint? You might ask, uh, since if you have clear push pins, we're going to paint the tops of them anyway. Because I think this is the best method to understand uh, pointillism and why part of it is an optical exercise that also keeps you disciplined to make your marks with, with pure colors. So, that's the basic idea. If you look at the syllabus, besides that, this is a, an idea of mosaics as well. It gives us a chance to look at how mosaic works are made. So it really has two purposes, to look at broken color, uh, either in mosaics or in pointillistic painting and to see how pure colors come together. We often do a mosaic of this instead of a, uh, instead of a painting with push pins or, or even paint. And on the, on the syllabus, it says week four, mosaic expansion, impressionist broken color and alternative materials. So that's, we're mimicking mosaics and for the purpose of of looking at how broken color works. And it's a very disciplined way to see how that works. So that's why we're using the push pins. Okay, so what I've done, what I've got here so far, here's my, my drawing, a very, very simple drawing that I'm gonna put the pins in. This is uh, three um, sections of cardboard taped together, cardboard box. And then I cut out from a piece of paper a uh, white surface to fit over that and then drew my, my little picture on that. Okay. And that's about as small as I think we want to get that size because the pins are fairly sizable. Here's some pins that I've already prepared. Uh, well, you can see that pretty well. Um, I've, I've created colors for the tops of these pens, painted the tops only from acrylic paint, which we have in the paint room, room 245. Here's my palette that I put the paint in, some mixing I did. And uh, before I painted the tops of these, of course, I just punched them into this uh, the two paper plates. It works pretty well. I painted them in groups according to the colors I would need in, in the picture some blues, greens, oranges, and blues for the sail, uh, blue for the sky, brown and orange for the boat, white for the, some of the sky, green for the sea, some blue for the sea, and so on. All right. I want to just for a second show you. When you get your acrylic paint to put in the palette, be sure you have a clean palette knife to, to get it out with. Get some out, put it in the palette, and then wipe off the palette knife really well before you put it in another jar of another color. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Uh, all right. So we've, uh, I, just, I just painted the tops with a regular brush. So now, just show you the next step here, just get it started. All right. So my 
my pins here, I had to, to let dry before I can work with them, of course. Uh, it doesn't take too long. And I want to um, emphasize that you should put the paint on thickly. Don't thin it with water because you want a, a nice thick um, color on top of the pen and you want it to dry quickly, um, but you don't want to thin it out in order to make it dry faster because you won't have a good color. So let's, um, let's take some uh, pens and see what we're, what we're gonna, how we're gonna do this. Uh, there's a white one for the sky here. Some white in the sky. Here's with some blue. In the sky. Here's some, uh, let's see what color is that? That's a boat color. There's some blue in the sail. There's another brown for the boat. There's some orange in the sail as well. There's some green in the sea. There's an orange in the boat. Some more blue up here. Some white. Green. Some gray in the sky. And what does it look like? Not too much yet. Um, let's pause here and make some more colors. All right. I paused long enough to to do some more on the sailboats. And that's how, um, that's how they look. I simplified a little bit. I took one of the, I took the foresail out of a larger boat because it was kind of hard to uh, distinguish what it was. You can't see it, but the whites in the sky are, have some yellow added. Probably you can't see that so well. Whereas the whites in the water are pure. Water is white and blues and greens. The uh, smaller boat is, the body of the boat is just uh, dark blue. The uh, blues and browns in the body of the larger boat. So it uh, begins to come together like a mosaic. And uh, I think you can make out pretty well what's going on there. So uh, it's about all there is to it. If, if these two examples uh, seem too complicated, look up uh, Claude Monet, M-O-N-E-T, 
haystacks. He painted um, some very cool, very colorful paintings of haystacks and, and different kinds of light. And, and those are very, very simple in terms of, of uh, dealing with larger shapes and also a lot of color, which uh, you could, you could, of course, uh, simplify the color. You would have to. Anyway, good luck with it. Email me if you have any issues. It's going to take a fair number of pins. And there are some pins on the counter in room 245. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to add is when you, um, you'll have to do this during the week so you can get into room 245, take your uh, everything you need into the room, except the acrylic, of course, the acrylic paint. The acrylic paint is in the gray cabinet to your left when you come in the door. I believe the first cabinet. Um, put the put the lids back on the jars when you when you finish getting paint out of them, so nice and uh, tightly so that they don't dry up. And be sure to clean the palette knife off between uh, between colors when you're getting the colors for your palette. Okay, that's, that's about it, nice short one.